All right. Well, I guess our, our first order of business for this meeting is to uh, reorganize the board. Uh, is there a motion uh, to nominate a chair? I move that Joyce Palmer Fortune be the chair of the Wake and Select Board for the forthcoming year. I'll second that. Okay. Any discussion? Uh, I'll accept the nomination. <laughs> I guess that's important to say. Um, and all those in favor, Fred? Aye. Julie? And Joyce? Aye. Okay. And um, I would like to nominate uh, Fred Barron as vice chair. I'll second that. Okay. Any discussion? So, Fred, do you accept that? Uh, yes, yes, I will accept that. Okay, great. Um, all those in favor? Fred? Aye. Julie? Aye. Joyce? Aye. All right. Um, I'd, I'd like to nominate uh, Julie as the uh, clerk of the select board. Okay. Would you accept that, Julie? Yes. Okay. Um, any further discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Fred? Yes. Julie? Yes. Joyce? Aye. Okay. I think we can go to our actual agenda now, which is behind something else on my screen now. Um, so the first um, item on that is the meeting minutes to review and approve the minutes from the June 8th, 2022 meeting. Um, are there any comments on the minutes? The only thing that I want to comment on was just that who was physically present and who was on Zoom? Joyce, you were on Zoom. Jonathan was on Zoom. I was present. And it's just not clear from this which was which. If that could be clarified. Yep. In the, in the first paragraph. In the first, right. In the top paragraph. Okay. So with that clarification, um, I would hear a motion on the minutes. Do we approve the minutes from the June 8th meeting? I'll second that. Um, all those in favor? Fred? Yes. Uh, Julie, do you want to vote on it? I vote on it if I wasn't present. <laughs> uh, I, I, you can abstain. I'm going to abstain, abstain if you like. Okay. Uh, so Julie, abstain. Joyce, aye. Okay, very good. Uh, the vendor and payroll warrants, I think those are the ones that I, are those ones I signed yesterday? Um, no, these would have been one, one of the, the ones. The previous that, uh, ones that John signed as his last time. Um, uh, so are there any comments on the vendor and payroll warrants? I have none. No. I have none either. Okay, great. We're up to public comment. Um, this is the time where we hear comments from the public on items not listed on the agenda. So is there anyone uh, either there in the room or on the Zoom who would like to make a comment? Okay, I'm not seeing anything um, on the Zoom. Just want to confirm with uh, with Brian, Fred, and Julie. Is there anybody in the room there who's like holding their hand up that I can't see? No, oh, they're just no. Nope. Okay, here, Brian, the two of us, and Anna. Okay, all right. Actually, I might go and pin uh, pin that one uh, so I get to so I can see a little bit better. Okay, great. All right. Um, next item is. COVID-19, I think at the time that the agenda was written, there was not, there was nothing uh, for us to really discuss about COVID-19. Uh, uh, I've got something. Uh, a couple of people who were, have been, or at the Friday or Saturday, 250th events, got three people that I know have tested positive at this mm -hmm. point including Fran Fortino from the Board of Health. Uh, so I would just urge everyone to be cautious, 
masks indoors. Uh, just it is still going around very much. Yeah, I, um, I think the Board of Health has made a, a sort of a statement to that effect. And I don't know how that is going out. It seems like something that might uh, could go out by the uh, the automated phone call. If they I, I, if the, if you all think of like Brian and, and Lynn, if you think that or sorry, Brian, Lynn or Amy, I don't know exactly who's the decision making team there. Um, I wouldn't object to that going out as a phone call. Um, I think the vast majority of our events so far have been outdoor events. Mm -hmm. I think the only indoor event we've had was the art show. Is that? We've got think, concerts tonight and tomorrow night. But yes, but tonight and tomorrow night's events are indoors. And then Friday and Saturday events are primarily outdoors as well. But it in spite of which, even outdoors, careful. Uh, I don't think we want to go to considering mask mandates for town buildings indoors without guidance. Yeah, yeah. I don't think we can, right? Because we don't have any way to enforce that. So, okay. Careful out there. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I guess that's what we can say is to be careful and to let the Board of Health message get out as best we can. Um, I did talk to, or I did have an email conversation with um, with Paul, who is really running the show at the concerts. I'm my me and my sons are going to be there to help. Um, and he says he always asks people to mask up at his concerts, and he provides masks. So that's uh, just just so people know that. Okay. Uh, I'm seeing in the chat that somebody was actually trying to make a public comment. Um, so since we're zipping through the agenda so quickly, I don't have a problem with going back to public comment and letting the public comment. Um, so if that's okay with everybody, I'm gonna go back to public comment briefly um, and let uh, Jared uh, make a comment. Uh, hi guys. Hi, 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 Joyce. How you doing? Uh, this is Jared from DMC, uh, the cannabis operation on uh, Seven River Road and Three River Road. Um, I just wanted to put a plug in. Um, we'd love to talk about um, at the next uh, select board meeting uh, to talk about uh, recruiting some additional uh, cannabis operations to town um, and of different uh, license types. Uh, so specifically, we're interested in the town and the select board's disposition uh, to um, social consumption. Um, and so that uh, currently is, is only allowed in uh, Amherst, uh, North Adams, uh, Springfield, uh, Providence, Cambridge, and Somerville. Um, and so we are, are speaking with uh, some social equity applicants. It's also restricted to, to social equity applicants right now. Um, and so we're, we're speaking with some social equity applicants that would be interested. Uh, we completed acquisition of the 424 State Road building. Um, and so are interested in, in using that building for that purpose, um, depending on the town's disposition and the select board's willingness to engage with the pilot program and to issue an HCA for that use. So just wanted to put a plug in for that and uh, look forward to talking to you more formally. Thank you. All right. So we'll try and be ready to chat about that at our next meeting. I don't know what else is on that agenda, but we it sounds like something we ought to chat about. So okay. Are there any other um, public comments? Okay. All right. Very good. Then let's go to the old business. Um, we've got an agricultural preservation restriction, an APR for the Ashman property at 163 Long Plain Road. Um, and maybe I'll turn that over to Brian. It's, this looks straightforward, but could you say what we're, we need to vote on, please? Uh, 
Yep. Yeah, you're, you're correct. It is pretty straightforward. So this is this is the the document the tab would sign is a co-holder to the uh, the APR, which is an agricultural preservation restriction. Um, that the previous town meeting, the town the residents voted to appropriate eleven thousand dollars for the town share, which is I think it's five percent of the total APR costs. And for its eleven percent, the town becomes a co-holder um, to the restriction, which. I mean, in practical terms, it's the town has the right to enforce the restriction if the state chooses not to, which is probably unlikely. But um, so this document is the document that gets recorded with the registry. It needs to to really solidify the restriction. So as a co-holder, the select board would sign on behalf of the town. Okay. Are there any questions? No. Nope. Move we approve the APR. And I'll second that. Um, is there any further discussion? Okay, then let's go to a vote. Um, Fred. Yes. Uh, Julie. Yes. Joyce. Yes. Okay, very good. Um, second item under all businesses to discuss and vote to rescind the fiscal 2023 fuel bid awarded to Santa Buckley and award that same uh, bid to Sandry Energy. This also seemed pretty straightforward, but I'll let Brian explain. Yeah, so the town um, bids out gasoline through the regional uh, fuel bid through the Franklin Regional Council of Governments and Fort Waitley the low bidder that we had discussed at the last meeting was a company called Santa Buckley out of Bridgeport, Connecticut. So it turns out that uh, only one other town was going to award uh, the bid to that company. So they didn't want to just deliver to two towns out of Bridgeport, Connecticut. So they, they asked that we not accept their bid um, because they don't want to do it. Um, so, uh, after speaking with the the Percock, the Percock person who, who deals with the fuel bids, they uh, suggested that we that we award it to the um, second low bidder, which is Sandry Energy. Um, I think theirs was seventy nine cents markup plus uh, over rack price. The one from Santa Buckley was was seventy one cents over rack price. So the second low bidder, Sandry, is who we currently have, and we haven't had any issues with them. So. I, I don't have any reservations about continuing with them if the board is inclined to do that. Okay. Same. Yeah. Are there um, any questions that anyone has to? Okay. I would hear a motion then. I move we rescind the gasoline fuel bid for Santa Buckley and awarded its, its place to Sandry Energy. And I'll second that. Okay. All those in favor? Fred? Aye. Julie? Aye. Joyce? Aye. Okay. Very good. On to new business. Um, the first item is, again, a fuel bid we need to review and vote toward the fuel bid for diesel and number two fuel oil for the coming year. And my understanding is this will also be a straightforward one. I would, I would think so. So unlike gasoline, we, we don't use the regional fuel bid for diesel and number two fuel oil. We've gotten very competitive pricing from at least one local company. Um, and sometimes we receive two or three um bids that come in that are typically under the regional price so um this year we also went out on our own and uh, my recommendation is to award it to um Kiris oil for um diesel and number two fuel oil um i've provided in the select board notes that there's a significant difference between the price that that's offered to us independently as opposed to the regional fuel bid so i would certainly recommend that that the town award the uh, diesel and number two oil to uh, Kiris oil. Was Kiris the only bid that came in? Yeah. Yeah, the only bid, but uh, significantly lower than what we would have gotten 
going another way. Okay, well, I would hear a motion on this. If there's no further discussion. I'll move that we accept the uh, diesel fuel bid from Curious Oil. Second. Okay, all those in favor? Fred? Aye. Julie? Aye. Joyce? Aye. All right, very good. Um, now this one will be a, probably a little longer discussion. We want to discuss and determine the fiscal year 23 select board department liaison assignments. Um, and that um, that's not, that list is, I don't think was in the meeting um, unless I missed it. I'm looking through the meeting materials. Um, oh no, here it is, I found it. We've got the liaison work. There we go. So I think what's going on here is we've got various departments, fire department, highway department, police department, our town administrator, the town offices in general, the schools and the water department. And uh, we generally just divide up those responsibilities. So if something comes up with the fire department, um, then Fred looks into it first and he's sort of the liaison there. And um, there we go, thank you. Um, I think uh, there's one that is normally given to the chair so that it rotates. Um, although I think one of those I thought it was just the town administrator that went to the chair. Because what I remember was that everybody had two liaison assignments and that there was one that floated around with the chair. I thought it was the town administrator was with the chair. Oh, I agree. Um, um, so if we, um, you know, if, if we take the simplest thing and leave uh, Fred and Joyce in all the places where we are um, and everywhere that we have a Jonathan for highway department um, and for town offices where I think that that shouldn't be chair that should just be uh, Jonathan. Joyce, um, if I can, I would actually like to take highway department but I would like to move along this year on trying to get plans started for the new, for a new garage potentially. Oh, okay. That's that, that would be the position to do that from. Okay. Oh, so this is just, I'm going to write them. Um, if, if no one else potentially wanted the highway department. Uh, I'm going to do annotate here. So um, Fred would like to be here. So I'm just going to do it with initials because I'm doing this with my mouse. Um, so we're looking at Fred is requesting there. Is there? Um, then then I would you, probably give up the water. Then you would like to give up fire and highway. Okay, so keep the fire and the highway. So that's been a, there's a request there. Julie, do you have <clears throat> any particular departments that you have a particular affinity for that you might? Not necessarily. As the newest member of the board, I'd be happy to fill in where needed and learn as I go and get information from people who previously held that position. Okay. Um, I'd be happy to take water and visit town offices. Okay. So JW and JW. Um, and then I would keep the schools and I would keep the police. Um, and then as chair, I would be the liaison with the town administrator. And I think one of the reasons we did that was because it, the chair and the town administrator come up with the agenda. So they're always talking to each other. Um, anyway, so it's a, a natural place for the liaison to be. So it sounds like I've captured, I feel like I've captured what we what we just talked about. Is that 
Sounds good. Yep. Okay. Do we need to actually ha have a vote on this, Brian? Um, I think it'll be good to have a vote. Okay. I move the liaison assignment to be accepted as shown on Joyce's amended sheet. I'll second. Okay. Great. All those in favor? Fred? Aye. Julie? Aye. Joyce? Aye. Okay. Very good. Um, now, move that and get back to the agenda. All right. The next one is to discuss and vote appointments for uh, individuals uh, to positions within the town for fiscal year 2023. And I think that is the, that's the sheet I was looking at a moment ago. The one that looks like this, it's about five or six, five and a half pages of, <coughs> of appointments that expire this year. Um, I was looking at this and I didn't see, maybe I missed it. Um, I didn't see the cultural council on there. Is it, there oh no, one, there, there's one. one on the cultural council. Um, are we, do we have any vacancies on the cultural council at the moment? Uh, I don't believe so. So the cultural council is a little different in terms of the state keeps track of appointments and they keep track of them to the date of appointment. So it's, if you were appointed, you know, October 4th mm. of a certain year, then it's three, it's, I think it's three year term, right? Three years, October 4th is when you need to be reappointed. Yeah. Uh, the town one we try to do on the, the fiscal year basis, so. Great. Are we allowed to have like more people on the cultural council than, than are on, like some committees that have to be like a minimum of five or a minimum of something. Do you happen to know if cultural council is one of those? I don't quote me on this, but I, I believe the cultural council is one that can be, I believe it's one that can have a lot of members. Uh -huh. um, the reason I ask is just in the last week at various Waitley 250 things, um, I met some you know, new people in town who are, um, they, they seem kind of interested in getting more involved. And I think cultural council is an easy way to help people get involved because they get to meet people and give out state money and find out more about what people are doing. Um, so I was hoping to, uh, at some point this summer, see if I could nominate. And I have to get back in touch with them and find out if they were really just saying what they wanted me to hear at the moment or <laughs> if they really um, were interested. I mean, and, and I think, um, I, for example, I don't know that they'd be interested in the energy committee where there's a vacancy or the fence viewer and field driver vacancies uh, that we. Oversight, I mean, those are technically vacancies that that uh, at least we have one volunteer to fill them like I don't think the people I was talking to would would be able to dive into that. So maybe what I'll do is I'll be in touch with them and then we'll maybe find out if there is more space to put one or two more people on the cultural council, just help them get involved. Yeah, I'll look it up Joyce and I'll, I'll, I'll send out an email. Okay. Uh, one comment I would have to involve myself, I should probably be removed from the housing trust because the housing trust and the select board both have some say over spending money for on housing issues and I shouldn't be having a say on both sides. I think that the, the select board has some level of veto over that spending of money. And I shouldn't have positions in both places. Mm. So I think we need we'll need to find someone new to be on the housing trust. Uh, I can go off the housing committee also and continue to as long as I'm on the distribution list continue to participate. 
but I think I should certainly come off the housing trust. Okay. Do you have um, a good idea of, uh, uh, or any idea of a possible nominee for that? Uh, there are a couple of new people on the housing committee, and I think maybe talk to Catherine Wolkowitz to see if one of those people would want to take that place. Okay. I know it's not always easy to find people for housing committee and to take yeah. responsibility for housing trust, but I just think it's a conflict of interest to be here and there. Okay. So um, I guess the other thing that I wanted to um, mention was I note uh, that the South County Senior Center Board of Oversight is supposed to be a select board member. So that should be one of us. And I think um, that's something that I would be uh, probably a good person to take over that unless Fred or Julie really want that. Go for it, Julie. Okay. <laughs> so I'll, I'll put myself in there as a nominee anyway. Um, the South County Board of Oversight, South County EMS, um, that John has offered to continue on the South County EMS Board of Oversight. And um, I think with his, if he's not trying to do the Senior Center and the Select Board, um, he may actually be in a good position to provide some continuity there and, and still represent us well. So I would not object to Jonathan staying on as uh, EMS he's Board of Oversight. Continuing with Tritown Beach as well. Sorry? He's continuing with Tritown Beach as well. And Tritown Beach, yeah, as well. I think that's a, I mean, I think he's been so involved in those yeah. um, that. I think those are good places to have some continuity, but I, I sort of feel like doing the senior center board of oversight might be too much. I uh, so and, and, and it should be a select board member, I think. And that really should be a select board member. Yeah, I am a yeah. Oh, okay. According to Brian, it's required. So yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. So And Joyce, I also snuck in here that you would continue on the personnel committee. Okay. Yeah, I was not, I was think that was, I didn't know my my uh, my time was up on that. Yeah, yeah, I had circled that one. Yes. Right. Fred, I still have you on the capital planning yeah. committee. Capital yeah. Government planning committee. Yeah. And I guess, um, do we have any good, uh, any thoughts about who might be good on the energy committee? I know they're talking about uh, you know, trying to figure out how we're gonna get electric school buses with some grants that are coming up. I know uh, Hannah had a meeting with the energy committee um, and maybe some other people who know how to get money for that sort of thing. Um, so the energy committee is doing stuff, they're not, it's not a, also not a big commitment, um, but we have to think of there's uh, another person. There was Jonathan, but um, uh, I think it's probably be a good idea if we can find another person for that. Yeah, he has asked to come off the energy committee. Yeah. I'd be curious about that. However, I admit that at this early stage, I'm just trying to figure out how mm -hmm. much of and then everything is so that I don't overcommit myself and underperform. So yeah, although yeah. I'm curious about that, I think I'm not going to volunteer at the moment. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, I bumped into another. This is, having all these weekly two fifty events has been great. Um, so I did. Now that I think about it, I bumped into someone who's actually um, very knowledgeable about renewable energy. Um, 
who lives in Waitley and has been here for seven years now and is a little bit more on her feet now than she was when she first got here. So maybe I look into seeing if she is, um, yeah, oh, if, if she might be a good candidate for that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't just, you know, nominate her without getting in touch with her. But I think I, I might have one candidate for being on the energy committee. When in 2022 are these terms up? Do we have a little wiggle room or is this immediate? Um, they would all expire at the end of, of 2022. So the end of the year. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, at the end of the fiscal year. So June 30th. Oh, okay. So yeah. These are all one, no one, year, one year starting July 1st. Got it. June 30th. Right. Got it. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And but I, the consequence of having the energy committee appointment come in August or September is pretty small. It just means the energy committee doesn't have three people until we manage to make the appointment. Same with cultural council and any other things on here that are vacant that we don't um, appoint today. Is that fair to say? Yeah, yeah and also the energy committee is, an ad, is, is really an ad hoc committee of the, of the select board. So it could have in theory more than three members. Yeah. Obviously you don't want to get too large and it's hard to achieve in terms of things like that as as we've probably all experienced at some point. Okay. One other I, do, I do feel strange that there's like four positions for fence viewer and field driver. I, I, I was gonna ask, this day and age, what do the fence viewer and field driver actually do? We have a lot of fence, and we have a lot of fields. <laughs> They drive around the fields and view them and view the fences from there. Yeah. Well, from a legal standpoint, I think they resolve disputes related to Probably agricultural line. fields. So to answer your question, what do they do? Probably not, not, not an awful lot of these days. And so the work could be divided between the two fence viewer and field drivers that we have appointed. Now we're not overburdening them by not filling those other two vacancies. I don't think so. Okay. All right. Uh, and I, if I could just mention um, one of one of the other things that's new here is the um, with Lynn retiring for COG representative um, would be Hannah, Hannah Davis. Don't tell her. Uh -huh. <laughs> I won't. Surprise. And I'll remain the alternate. Okay. Well, um, is there any further discussion of the appointments on this list? No, um, I'm looking at this quickly. And I don't think I added um, uh, Joyce, we just created the, the uh, traffic traffic control officer position, right? Oh, um, right. But what wasn't that something that was going to be, that was not an appointment, right? The police were going to fill that with people as you go. It wasn't. Yeah, that, that's true. It is. It's a non. Uh, it's not an appointed position. I, but as we don't determine the person, right? Right. And it's, it's not a, uh, well, Right, so the, the board appoints part-time police officers, but it's not a sworn uh, police position. It's a civilian position is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Okay, all right. I'll be quiet. I'm good. Uh, I also see Jonathan on the Open Space and Recreation Committee. Did he express any opinions on whether we want to continue with those or not? Yeah, he said, he, he asked me um, to communicate that um, he wanted to be off the energy committee, but he would continue on the other ones. Okay. okay. Unless anybody has a strong desire to go on the wreck. Although we could probably, I don't, I don't know if that were fully staffed on the wreck. But. Okay. I move the appointment list as 
printed and then subsequently amended here. I'll okay. Uh, and then uh, just to be clear about what the amendments are is that we would not be appointing Fred to the housing trust, but you would stay on the housing committee. Is that correct? Okay. And uh, was there any other? Um, and that just make clear that uh, South County EMS would be Jonathan Edwards, South County Senior Center Oversight Board would be me. Yeah. Right. And those are the those are the changes. Yes. Yeah. Those are the only changes from what's printed that I have. Okay. Any more discussion? Okay. Then let's go vote. Fred. Hi. Uh, oh, sorry. I should make it clear. All those in favor. <laughs> Fred. <laughs> okay. Hi. <laughs> Julie. In favor. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Joyce, yes. Okay. I'll get my agenda now. Oh, to discuss the select board summer meeting schedule. That's um. Everybody, get to pull up their calendars now. So, um, I know in the in the past we sometimes have. Uh, We've had some summer months that only have one meeting, um, but it may depend a little bit on what's going on. So um, I have a suggestion, Brian, I think from someone who suggested we might go to every week. There was a suggestion. Yep. I, I think we'll reject that. Okay. Twice a week. <laughs> Someone said twice a week? <laughs> yeah, well, Brian wants to be twice a week. <laughs> I'll get less work on that way. <laughs> I see. Okay. Um, Brian, what's our proposed schedule? Oh, oh it, one thing. And this may be just a, a quick meeting. Hannah's working on a on a grant application for something called the Gap Three program, um, and that would require support approval. It's due the fifteenth by right? July fifteenth. Yeah. Yep. And what I think, well, I'll summarize it, and Hannah can give a little bit more detail. But it's it's for uh, looking at uh, solar array at the uh, the water department pump house. Yeah, it's um, meant to cover the uh, funding gap between energy utility incentives and the rest of the cost of the project. Um, we are still preparing an application. Uh, we're waiting for an energy audit. Um, and then I'll be able to incorporate that data into the application and present a draft for you guys. Um, but the final uh, grant application is due on the 15th. So we just need approval before then to submit it. That's July 15th. Yes. Okay. Do you went to a couple of meetings back? <clears throat> we requested you look at the uh, electrical installation, at the electrical vehicle charging station yeah. issue. Is, yeah. Is a report roughly forthcoming like fall? When? Yeah. So when we might received, we expect that? Yeah, we received a quote from um, Energy Source. Um, like we said, it was a little bit over what we expected. So I think we're kind of at a stalemate now in terms of either like putting money towards the project from the town or um, figuring out a way that we can apply on our own um, without going through energy source. So I would be happy to defer to the select board for direction um, for that. I'm also happy to- Okay, but you, you, you don't have anything that you, that's imminent that you to be reporting back, that's all? Yes. Okay. Okay, so it sounds like um, our usual second Wednesday, the 13th of July, would be a good idea to have a meeting. Is that far enough in advance for you, Hannah? Yeah, that works for me. Okay. <clears throat> what time of day do we have that meeting? So normally we'll do it 6 p.m. Today was special because there's the 250th um, 
event in the evening. So today was an unusual afternoon meeting. I have alternating rehearsals for an improv group that I work with, and we do meet on the 13th and on the 27th in July at 7 p.m. Uh, if it's oh. possible, bump the meeting earlier or to a different day, I'd be happy to attend. Mm. In person or and via Zoom. Well, if you've got, if you're going to be having second and fourth Wednesdays, which are our usual meetings. Mm, yeah. <laughs> oh, right. Not all. Yeah. Sorry to throw a little monkey wrench in there, but for August, our rehearsals are the third and the fifth mm. Wednesday. So I would be available the second and the fourth of August. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. On the 13th, yeah. the people could meet at 5.30. I'd be fine with it, especially if we're going to have a short meeting. If we're going to have a short meeting. Just time. really to approve that one item. Brian, you won't be here for that anyway, right? So it'll go quicker. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So it sounds like uh, July 13th at 5.30. Um, I will definitely be remote on that one because I won't actually be in town, um, but that's still going to be legal on the 13th. Um, hopefully, the legislator or the governor or somebody uh, extends our COVID privileges after that. Um, okay. Okay. Good, and then um, presumably there'll be enough stuff kind of built up that we need a, a meeting later in the month. Um, I would also put out there that um, Select Board is not always met on Wednesdays. We used to be a Tuesday meeting. Uh, I think it's a little harder to make the posting requirements for a Tuesday meeting than for a Wednesday meeting, um, but uh, it's not out of the question to uh, move our meetings to a, a different day either. Um, so July 27th would be our other normal meeting day. And my other normal review. That's your, yeah, that's your other, your that's other. Just for that month. So. Yeah. Um, would we, would anybody object to moving it to the Tuesday, the 26th? I would not object. I'm fine with that. Okay. At 6 p.m.? Sure. Then that one. Gosh, I, I, you know, I hope that they will extend the ability of people to, the chair to attend the meeting by Zoom um, by then. Um, otherwise, I think if I come in by Zoom, I'm like any other member of the public and Fred would run the meeting. Um, so that's the the we'll the see what, what they do yeah. in Boston. We'll see we'll see what they do in Boston. Our state senator's office got back to me and said they think it's going to be extended to December. Um, but will they do it? They probably won't have it done on the 13th and my guess is it'll be done on the afternoon of July 15th which is the last day <laughs> that they can do it to yeah, have some continuity. So, so there's that. Okay. So for August, um, I think we're technically the second and last Wednesdays. So if we had a regular meeting schedule, it'd be August 10th and August 31st. I think one of those conflicts with what Julie just mentioned. 31st does. I could do the 10th or the 24th and or. Uh, can definitely do the 10th. Why don't we just revisit this at our meeting like July 26th and see where we, what we look to have. Okay. That's okay with me. Yeah, I've, I've got some things that are floating around in there, uh, which might mean joining remotely. Um, but it could be that August is the month when we only meet once and maybe the 24th would be um, a reasonable kind of in between. 
That's the thing. We'll see on July 26th, we'll see what the schedule in our calendar might look like. Yeah, and how much stuff we not. need to done. Okay. All right, so I've got July 13th at 5.30 and July 26th at 6 p.m. Choice, um, which meeting would you like me to invite Jared to? Or none of them. Not not never, but I mean, none of them <laughs> in July. <laughs> um, well, um, it might be nice to have a chat with him earlier, say just you and me. Um, Yes, you and I have had talks with him before because we were the liaisons for the pilot. Um, well, I guess not really a pilot, um, yeah, the okay. HCA. Um, so maybe um, it would be fruitful if you and I and he had a um, had a quick Zoom. Uh, and then if we're really trying to keep the July 13th meeting short, um, then maybe the 26th would be would be better. That gives us more time to um, have a, a chat with him beforehand. Uh, and the 13th, we're trying to keep that one short. And you're not going to be here for that one either. Brian, Brian won't be around for a couple of weeks anyway, so I don't think right. I schedule that Zoom meeting before the meeting on the 26th. Right. Yeah. Uh, okay. Before the, before the meeting on the 13th. Yeah. Sorry. Yep. Okay. 26th, I'll. I'll yeah, and I would like you to be there for the meeting where Jared is with us. So, so pencil in the 26th for Jared? Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Okay. All right, I think we're down to town administrator updates. Yes. Um, so the town has received approval to um, opt out of the statewide mosquito spray program. I included that uh, the approval letter in the select board packet. Um, so the town had to prepare um, an alternative mosquito management plan, uh, which the Board of Health did. And the town, uh, the other uh, factor was that the town is in a, a low risk area for mosquito borne illness. Uh, I think there's two factors that the state allowed the town to opt out. Um, and that was on recommendation of the Board of Health. So uh, we have approval of that, this approval for one year. Um, and there's always the caveat that we can opt out, but eventually if the state said, oh, it's such a high risk, and you know, I think they could, I think the law allows them to override the local decision. but. Uh, at least until this point, they, they're going to respect the local authority to do that. Um, town hall windows. So the this is an ongoing um, issue with the, the storm windows that were installed uh, during the rehabilitation of the town hall. Uh, when they were originally installed, they had some, some pink staining um, on the outside of the glass. And if you look closely, um, Joyce, you're going to you're going there tonight, I think. If you look closely at the storm windows, you'll see a lot of times it's at the bottom. It's like this blotching and it's, it's a, a pink. And we think it's um, some degradation of the low, uh, the low E coating, I think that's what it's called. Mm -hmm. uh, so some of the windows were replaced within a couple of weeks of their installation back in 2018, I think is when uh, they were installed. Um, and the problem has reappeared. And it's, we did a, a survey of the windows um, and we overlaid it on the original survey of the windows. And it's happening to some of the ones that originally installed and not replaced, but it's happening to some of the ones that were replaced. Mm. Um, and I included my email correspondence in the select board packet. Um, I'm gonna follow up with, with the company again. They were supposed to follow up with the manufacturer and surprise, I haven't heard back yet. So um, we'll follow up with them and we'll, we'll keep pursuing that. The warranty, the warranty period runs until um, I'll have to double check the month, but it's next spring. Um, so we'll have to stay on top of that. Uh, I don't think that they are um, eager to send replacements. So we'll have to figure out, you know, the best course of action. Um, but at this point, um, they've offered to check with the manufacturer. So um, we'll see. Uh, police station septic repairs. 
So that's the there was a failure of the main septic line from the from the building um, underneath the concrete slab to the septic. Uh, that project has been completed. The pipes have been repaired. The the new floor, uh, the new concrete floor, the, the patch on the floor has has cured, and the tiles have been laid and polished. And uh, the the blue sheet is happy with the the work that's been done there. Um, so this ongoing um, opioid settlement, uh, the opioid uh, lawsuits that are happening between um, it's essentially a lot of the states, a number of states, and um, some of the opioid manufacturers and distributors, um, the town along with uh, many other towns um, joined a class action suit brought by the Attorney General's office. Um, and so what's come out of that has been a settlement um, that is going to be split a number of different ways and the, the, the town of Whitley is going to get a, a, a small portion of those funds. Um, and I've reached out to the Board of Health to ask them if they, you know, what their thoughts are in terms of the use of the abatement funds. And I thought um, once the Board of Health has a conversation, then we can invite the Board of Health to come before the select board and have a talk about, you know, the best way to use uh, those funds. Obviously, they're considered abatement funds, so they're supposed to be used to help abate the opioid crisis. Um, and, you know, it's it, it's a class action lawsuit, and typically in class action lawsuits, the members of the class don't <laughs> don't get a don't get a, a great deal of money from that. Um, so, it's, if you um, if you have a magnifying glass, you can see the chart that I had sent out. Yeah, I did just yeah. for the. <laughs> Audience, it looks like we are supposed to receive sixty-six thousand and sixty-eight dollars over the next seventeen years. Yeah. So it's um, there has been talk, and I think there will be talk sort of at the regional level as to how municipalities can combine funds. Um, but that 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 conversations that conversations ongoing. Yeah. I just wanted to update the board on the, the status of that. Um, Something that I didn't list because um, it happened between uh, when I when I sent that agenda, we have the report on the um, needs assessment for the South County Senior Center. Um, I sent that out to the board, and we'll post this on the website if it's not already there. Um, this was a three-town uh, supported needs assessment, senior needs assessment, um, in support of um, hopefully in support of changes to the South County Senior Center. Um, which Joyce will get thrown headlong into. Um, yeah. So that uh, that report's done. It was prepared by um, UMass Boston. Uh, I won't read the whole name. Um, excuse me. Uh, but it was done by a consultant through UMass Boston, and that'll be uh, taken into account as as future planning for the for the South County Senior Center. Um, that's about all I have. Two fiftieth events coming up, right? Two concerts, fireworks. Yeah, no, I, 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 I can do that. All right, let's try to do it. Concert tonight. Concert tomorrow night. Uh, chicken barbecue, which is sold out, but also fireworks on Friday night. Saturday is family day at Harley Field. Uh, most for younger families in particular. And then Sunday is the parade running from the church in downtown along Chestnut Plain, turning on Christian Lane, and ending at the intersection of Christian Lane and Long Plain. See you all there. <laughs> yep. And right now, the weather looks really great for the outdoor days for Friday and Saturday and Sunday. It all looks really nice. So, and but the events we've had so far have been incredibly well received. We've been getting wonderful feedback from everyone. I think so many people just love the opportunity for the town to get together for these kinds of events. Uh, Joyce, you've been there for most of them. And yeah, yeah, I would agree. I'd agree with that. That um, uh, that that you know, people are happy to come and. Uh, I think I, I talked to at least one person who's really disappointed they didn't get a barbecue ticket before they were sold out. So,
Okay. Well, then I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. Okay, those in favor, Fred. Aye. Julie. Aye. Joyce. Aye. All right. Thanks, everybody.